Alrighty, um, I want to start discussing redox reactions. More specifically, in this first video, I want to talk about how to assign oxidation numbers. So this is a really important skill that's going to help us identify and understand what's going on in these redox reactions. A lot of our categories, single displacement, combustion, decomposition, and synthesis, potentially fall under the bigger category of redox reactions. And just so I have more buy-in and just so you're at home, you're thinking, well, why, why do I care? There's a lot of redox reactions that we take for granted. The primary one, the electron transport chain. So how your body uh, makes energy is a series of redox reactions. Um, another big one would be batteries. So if you're using a battery right now, whether it be your cell phone or on your computer, there's a redox reaction going on in that battery. So uh, very important for our day-to-day -day life as well. All right, so assigning oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are theoretical. They're theoretical charges. It wouldn't be fair to assign an actual charge to a covalent molecule because remember your covalent molecules stick together. So they never break up and they never form like a plus one or anything. They're always just together. And so we can't say, well, it has a certain charge. But we need to assign it a charge anyway. And we call those theoretical, those fake charges, oxidation numbers. We can also assign oxidation numbers to ionic compounds. And in that case, we'll see, and we're going to practice this, where the oxidation number is equal to the charge on the ion. And then, well, how do we do this? So we want to understand the definition of electronegativity. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom to pull in electrons. It's going to grab a hold of those electrons and pull them in to its shell. Fluorine has the highest electronegativity value. So fluorine is right here on the periodic table. It is the highest electronegativity value. So the rule of thumb, you can look at published lists of electronegativity values. But what chemists do, especially when they're assigning oxidation numbers and they need to think about electronegativity, um, what chemists will do is they'll just use what's called a periodic trend. So as we go across any row in the periodic table, electronegativity, I'm going to use EN, EN increases. Likewise, as we go up any group in the periodic table, electronegativity increases. So fluorine's your man. So if you focus in on fluorine, and you remember, okay, fluorine's the most electronegative, and you're looking at your periodic table, as you get closer and closer to fluorine, whether it be moving from left to right, or moving from top to bottom, the electronegativity is going to increase. Sometimes you'll see some textbooks do um, like a diagonal arrow to remind students of this trend. So as we move towards fluorine, electronegativity increases. I have my group eight like marked out here. There are no, for the most part, there's a couple of exceptions, but for the most part, um, we say that group eight doesn't have electronegativity values. Why might that be? So think about what's going on with group eight. Group eight already has that full shell, so there's no need to pull in electrons. It has a full shell, so it, it doesn't have the ability, it doesn't have the need to pull in electrons. Another thing that you may have heard me say um, in jest, in lecture, is that we got our losers on the left. Um, and you've seen that as you have been working on some of the problems, um, all of our metals always lose electrons to form uh, positive cations. They're losers, they lose the electrons. It goes hand in hand with electronegativity values though. 
these will be our least electronegative atoms because they have the lowest electronegativity then. One way to think about it, group seven tends to have pretty high electronegativity values, especially fluorine. It's so close. It's almost gonna look like a noble gas. So it's the most motivated to pull in the electrons. And indeed, it can pull in electrons from anybody in the vicinity. Fluorine's that um, powerful in terms of electronegativity.